an entrepreneur is about what you do, it's sort of about who you are. And when two of those minds come together, I think what you can create is life-changing. I was born in Vietnam, a family of 10 of us. My parents were farmers. We were as poor as poor can be back in my country. So when they first came to this country, my father at the time was 35 years old, did not speak English. We had no money, so we were in the projects. You know, the house was infested with cockroaches. I had my siblings, I had my parents, and that was pretty much it. After about 12 years, my mother somehow managed to save $35,000 in her piggy bank and invested that in a restaurant. After just about two years into the restaurant, we started making enough money. We finally bought a house in a safe neighborhood where we actually have a front yard where, where I can walk down the street and not feel threatened. Things just kind of changed for us really fast and in a very, very positive way. But I also did not like how much time they were spending at the restaurant. They won't get home to two or three in the morning and they're right back out there at six, seven in the morning. So even though I saw the benefits of what having a business would do, I also saw a part of that brick and mortar business that I didn't like. My biggest memories of my dad is, is him working and never complaining about it. He was a Finnish carpenter, so very skilled worker, but he just worked all the time. I saw him work himself literally to the ground and he kind of pushed me away from that. So get a job, don't work yourself to death. I understood the message, but I still feel like I had a lot of him in me that wanted to do something for myself. There was a tanning salon that came for sale about five minutes from my house. I don't think I ever stepped foot in a tanning salon. I started just showing up every day for almost three months trying to learn the business and it kind of worked itself out and I became the owner of a tanning salon. But I was now in a physical location. We're open seven days a week. And in my head, I would always tell myself, I'm doing this business so that I have the flexibility to be there for everything, but I still built myself a lifestyle that depended on me being present. And I, I started to become exactly what my dad warned against. So growing up, my father always told us, get straight A's, engineer, doctor, lawyer. So I went to pharmacy school, you know, I worked as a pharmacist, got married, had kids, bought a house. Two years later, um, got divorced, went back to live with, with my dad. I lived in his basement with my two sons. And here I am, you know, 26 years old, divorced. I never stopped to ask myself, is this what I really wanted? When I first got exposed to Amazon FBA, it was starting to hear about private label. And the first product that I kind of came across that seemed to fit all the criteria was a winter ski mask. Made my first purchase of 500 units and I labeled all of them and I created the graphics and I stickered everything and then from there sent them to Amazon. I think as soon as they hit an inventory, I'd start getting sales and I could start to at that point see that with Amazon FBA, I was a thousand percent in. All those stories you hear of parents missing out on their child's first Christmas, their child's first time walking. I missed out on my son's first Halloween trick-or-treating and I didn't like how that felt at all. I cried at work. At this point in time, I knew very strongly that what I need 
with any kind of business that allows me to have the flexibility to be with my son. And that's kind of how I stumbled onto the whole online thing. I sold things on eBay, I tried affiliate marketing, I tried blogging, I tried YouTube, but nothing really stuck. And that's when I met Brian. I remember our first conversation, our first ever real conversation that I could remember. I had some instant mix bulletproof coffee on my desk and Brian, you know, he just happened to walk by. And I said, you like bulletproof coffee? And she kind of gives me this look like, you know what bulletproof coffee is? So I started talking to him about bulletproof. And then the more we talked, the more we realized we have a lot of things in common. And at the time, I was trying blogging and I was trying YouTube. And I was also really surprised about how much Brian knows about blogging and monetizing. And then I realized, wow, you know, this guy knows a little bit more than I did. And one day, he told me about Amazon FBA. He would show me his phone and he says, here, see, I just sold a product and Amazon's gonna ship it. And I was like, what? They ship it for you? I wanted to get started right away, so I, I, I jumped right in and I took a deep dive into it. You get something in front of her that she believes in and she's an action taker. So I decided that I'm going to quit my job and do Amazon full time. Next few months, she's already sourcing products. She's like kind of way ahead of even where we had our initial conversation. So like her ball just started rolling. Maybe a year after that initial like, hey, look at these random sales on Amazon, she found a winning product. At this point in time, we started dating. So we were always talking about business, talking about our lives, talking about Amazon. It didn't feel like work to us. It was natural to us. It was just talk. And even though I come from a family uh, with parents who were entrepreneurs, I've never ran a business before. Um, and knowing that I have someone that I can ask questions and get great answers from, it allowed me to take more risks than I probably would have otherwise. So, you know, right from the beginning, we just worked great as a team. hard for two people kind of running a business out of their house to grow as quickly as we did. I mean, I think we went from, you know, 300,000 to 5 million in like three years. So at the time we were in Ezra Firestone's mastermind. After 30 minutes of talking with Ezra, he was like, why don't you guys sell? You guys have this unique skill set that no one else has. Use that skill set and build another one and sell it again. Me and Brian were like, Oh, I guess that makes a lot of sense. Why don't we sell? So we made an appointment with Joe from Quiet Lay. Right off the bat, I could tell Joe was definitely somebody that, even if we didn't work with, he's just a great guy, had a lot of good advice. He said, listen, I'm not gonna tell him to sell. It's really up to you guys. But here, here's the deal, here are the numbers, here's what you need. He was being super, super helpful. And then six months later, you know what? Company's still doing great, we told Joe. All right, we're ready now. About 30 days later, we had an offer from a private equity group. We were really, really excited about that. Everything is going well. December comes, we hit the biggest month that we could have ever imagined. We did over a million dollars that month. Things were still going up and everything seemed to be going perfectly. On the day we're supposed to close, we woke up to our hero skew, had a safety complaint, and was now suspended. So our biggest nightmare happened. I talked to Joe, asked him what to do. He basically says, we just tell him the truth. We were so confident. We had suspensions before. Anyone that's been on Amazon has had suspensions. We knew we were gonna get through it. I restructured the deal to take some of the risk off of them and put it more onto us. They felt comfortable and we moved forward. On the next time that we're supposed to close, we wake up that morning. This time it was an IP complaint. And now this time it wasn't one listing that was suspended, it was 85% of 
all of our SKUs were, were gone. I actually, at one point in time, told Brian, take me out of the email because the emotion were too much for me. It was sort of me in the background, just talking with Joe, talking with the brand and patent holder, trying to figure something out. Every conversation I had with him, I'd get off and it would end with him telling me, no, it's, it's not going anywhere. But Joe Valley was kind of by our side with everything. He was this negotiator for us. He was kind of like the middleman between us and the buyer, kind of like to smooth things out. Joe kept telling us, just wait, man, you're just gonna, you're gonna be so psyched, it's gonna hit your bank account and you're gonna forget about all of this stuff. When that payment hit the bank account, we had never seen that much in our account ever in our lives. And here we are with a seven figure in our bank. You know, my life has changed so dramatically. I no longer miss out on any of those moments of my children growing up that I was scared about missing out on before, and I couldn't be happier. And Joe, he's no longer just a broker for us, he's also like a friend. Since selling, both me and Janine, we're, we're not stopping. We started a new e-commerce business. We don't have the same uh, fears that we had the first time around. We now have some financial security. We've got all of our needs taken care of. We're just, life is really good right now.